Hey, welcome to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. We're at the beautiful Alfie Family Farm in western Wisconsin in Vernon County. It's beautiful out here, Isn't man. it absolutely gorgeous? gorgeous. I'll tell you what, uh, we have something in common with what we're going to do today. I do, at least. Really? I was born and raised in Wisconsin. Okay, got There's number on one that. key. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to be actually, we're at a nice, sustainable family farm. We are at the Ofty Family Farm, like you mentioned. Right. It's a Wisconsin grass fed beef cooperative. Yes, sir. There, there are about 190 strong, if I'm not mistaken, throughout the whole state of Wisconsin. Uh, we are actually in Coon Valley, uh, and, and I actually had the opportunity just a little uh, uh, east and a tad bit south at Westby to stay at a nice little hotel there. Well, this is beautiful, beautiful country. If you've never been in this part of the state, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous coming and, in And you know what happened really about, uh, uh, a few hundred years ago, the French came down, did a little trapping. They did. Yeah, and they stayed for quite a while, and then the, 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 the Nordskis. The Nordskis? You know the Nordskis. Nord I think I went to school with the Nordskis. The Scandinavian came, and they saw these beautiful coolies, and coolie, by the way, is, is French for valley. Okay. So, all, like, we're on Spring Coolie Road. I'm just wondering how that worked. And, all right. and so coolie means valley, and, and so, and, and, and if you look over yonder, on the other side of that hill, is zigzag and curve, La Crosse, Wisconsin, okay. is to the west, a little bit north of us, about 28 miles, right. 25 miles, somewhere in that neighborhood. So that's where we're pinpointing that. We're at, we're at the Ofty Family Farm. We are gonna be doing some grass-fed beef, gorgeous stuff. We're gonna do some wonderful Elkham butter. Yes. And some other wonderful things. So stay tuned. The next first segment is gonna be a little uh, uh, south of the border cooking. Oh, we're going south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So stay tuned, we'll be right back with, not more of Mad Dog and Merrill's, but Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Yeah, but we're gonna have more of it. Absolutely, stay it. tuned. We'll be right back. Hey Mad Dog, why do fish avoid the computer? I don't know, Merrill, why do fish avoid the computer? So they don't get caught in the internet. <laughs> <laughs> the internet. <laughs> Join the exclusive Mad Dog and Merrill Grillin' Club. Every member receives the official Grillin' Club t-shirt and towel. Discover new recipes, chat with fellow grillers, watch valuable videos, learn new jokes, or submit a unique recipe for a chance to see it on our show. Log in now for your chance to share in the Grillin' Club. View past episodes of our show by going to maddogandmerrill.com and click on Midwest Grillin'. Hey folks, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. You know, I kind of confused folks earlier. I said the same that born and raised in Wisconsin. And well, what I confused. meant what I meant was the cattle are born and raised in Wisconsin, so was I. Gotcha. But All what right. the nice thing about the with the cattle? With the what's <laughs> nice about the cattle being born and raised in Wisconsin is there's there's less fuels, fossil fuels being used to raise them. Right. It's not yeah, as though we're, 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 we're trucking them in from thousands of miles away or, or across a, a, to a different country. They're actually raised right here in Wisconsin. You're helping out family farmers. And the, you know what the, the great thing about the, the, the cattle here is they're relaxed. Well, That's why I wore this peace shirt today because so are the cattle at peace. They're relaxed. They're, they're like a, a, their social behavior is normal. Well, they're just, they're just walking around, grazing away. They're enjoying life. That's how we should do it in life, folks. Just walk around, graze around, and enjoy life. That's exactly right. In fact, they're just coming out of the woods, yeah. out of the shade, grazing back there. So it's kind of neat. Uh, we're going to do a little south of the border cooking. I took the, uh, a hanger steak. Okay. And, and I looked up hanger steak, and I thought a hanger steak was the same as a skirt steak. Sure. I thought the, you know, the skirt hangs right here like a skirt on the cow, on a cattle. But, but actually, there's the brisket right here. Right. And the hanger steak hangs inside the rib cage, underneath the brisket, underneath the ribs, inside, protecting the organs. And I took a, a wonderful little hanger steak. I'll show you in a moment. I glistened it with an oil south of the border. So I used a little chili powder, a little nutmeg, a little bit of our grilling magic over here. I squeezed lime over the top. And I'm going to get another lime ready because that's what I planned on doing the yep. whole time. And, and I seared it up, I put the green egg at a nice high temperature, and I seared up one side of that hanger steak. Mm. Now there's, there's one of the baby. hanger steak, and it just has this piece of fat down the middle that's just so flavorful. So I'm gonna sear it up on the other side now, All right. on our green egg. I'm gonna squeeze a little lemon over the little lime over the top of that. We're gonna get that ready to cut up into fajitas. We need tortilla shells. We need tortilla shells. You know, tortilla shells are very economical. A lot of people use them for everything. I love this because tortilla shells, you get the large ones, you get the small ones, whatever size you want. I like these. I like these too. You need about six of them. All right. Anyway, I'm going to use the whole pack. They look hungry. The crew looks hungry and everybody else here. Yep. All that I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap these up in aluminum foil. Now, you can do these in the house if you want to. Some people even like them 
for, you know, maybe 20 seconds or so, but I'm gonna wrap these up. I'm gonna place them on the grill and leave the grill for about 10 minutes, nice medium heat. You might wanna check them once in a while. You don't wanna overcook them or anything, but move it over to one side yeah. where there is no heat and just slow cook them for about 10 minutes and then you've got a nice soft shell to go ahead and fix to add your meat and your vegetables to it. The uh, uh, peppers and onions, because we're gonna do some fajitas. All right. Uh, if you hadn't had a chance to use our beautiful extra virgin olive oil, it's hand harvested, small batches, first cold press out of Chile. Uh, uh, if you don't have it at the grocery store you're shopping at, ask for it. Maybe they'll get it in for it. We do appreciate it. Onions and peppers, drills with some beautiful olive oil over the top. I've already seasoned it with the three seasonings I used today, a little nutmeg chili powder and grilling magic, low sodium garlic pepper blend. I'm gonna take our peppers and our onions and over All on right. the Phoenix grill, I've got that baby fired up to about 400 degrees right now. Mm. We have one of the little stir fry baskets, they're excellent to have if you, if you need a gift for anybody, that's a great gift to use. So I'm gonna stir fry those, get those going, get them nice and softened up for the fajitas, for the hanger steak, for the? Avocados. Avocados. Sorry, you better believe it, a little south of the border action. You know you can make your homemade guacamole. If you're using homemade guacamole, you wanna use a really nice, soft avocado. Uh, these, I got a this different brand. This one's brand. a little hard. Yeah, that is hard, that is hard. That one you might wanna wrap up in a brown paper bag, set it on the counter maybe for a day or so, then I'll go ahead and That's soften right. that up a little bit. On there. They're hard. Yep. They're very hard. Now we'll see on this and this is a little bit on the soft side. Not really tricky, but you want to serve one right in the medium of soft and hard, which I don't have. Yeah. 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 So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and slice this avocado right down the middle on all sides with the knife. Be careful. Be careful. I'm a professional. Don't this you worry. This is live television oh, tape. God, this is live no, television don't tape. Do that. Don't it? do that. No, no, no. Okay, I'll go ahead and slice on the top. All right, see that where that came off? Yeah. You got the one half there. Okay, not the one I could cut that off. I'm gonna leave that there. You know, I, I was telling, I was telling uh, uh, my hairstylist about grilled avocados, and she's—they've done them too, where they actually they pop them out of the shell, out of the peeling too. But I said I think Merrill does them in the peeling. I do them in the peeling. You know why? Because then afterwards you're at a party, and you want to grab something, you just grab that little avocado, and you got a spoon, and you could just walk around. Was I invited to the party? You weren't invited to the party. All right. Okay, so you take the pit out. See how easy that is? Don't have to swear about it. You don't it. have to take that out. Place that. Now, if you'd like, I would add a little bit of olive oil. Let's drop just a little bit of olive oil on there. Okay, very good. Want to get that olive oil on there. Now, you have choices that you can make. Some people will go ahead and use uh, even black beans. You know, put those in the center. Put some cheese on there. Today, I'm cheating. You can use some tomatoes and some onions. But you know what I'm going to do today? Today, I'm going to use a little bit of salsa in there. Really? And you yeah. got all those beautiful tomatoes and onions all and right. cheese? right. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mix them all together is what I'm going to do. That'll thicken it up a little bit. That'll help. All right. Go ahead. Put and some mix onions it. in All right. Put some onions in there. Put that in there. Come on. You're doing good. There you go. A lot of onions. A lot of onions. Okay. Place that right in the center. Okay. Now, two things you could do. You could place that on the grill right now. Put it on for about 10, 15 minutes if you wanted to before that. Let me try this hard one. I want to see if I can get that open because I want to show them what it's like to do. Uh, I want to do some jalapeno pop. Uh, okay, anyway. anyway. How long do you cook them? Anyway, about 20 minutes. But if you wanted to, you could rub that with oil, grill that about four minutes on each side, then put the salsa and the cheese on I it. think that's the way I prefer to yep, do it. A couple yep. of little soft squ score right, marks Right, it makes it a little it. bit more softer that way. The jalapeno poppers, we've done them before. Here's a quick way to do them. I'm going to do these fast because jalapeno Oh, pop take your time. It's our show. No, no, no. we got to get other things cooking here, buddy. Okay, all right. Take a fresh jalapeno, slice off one of the sides, hollow out the seeds. You pop that baby out and you got yourself a little uh, filling area there, a little cavity. Yep. This is just plain cream cheese. I'm gonna put these on the grill, on my Phoenix grill off to the side. I'm gonna take this off right now. This is, okay, okay. I'm gonna let Let's this take that. this off and sit. We're just gonna let this sit for a minute until the next segment. Okay. And we're gonna show how to put together the fajitas. I think that's done. It's just gonna set in tent now for about at least 10 to 15 yes. minutes to absorb the, 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 uh, the uh, juices back right. in and to settle real nice and raise in temperature. So if I'm not mistaken, that's gonna be a, mm. that's a nice rare right now, and I think we're doing just fine. If I'm not mistaken. I could dig right in there right now. I, I bet don't you could. The tortillas, I don't need uh, And the only thing I was gonna do is throw some pecans. I can't do it. I'll do this for the steaks later okay. on. Right. We're gonna throw a little pecan wood on our green egg right, to, to add a little action. smoke flavor to I it. I like that, I like so that. So you folks stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
We're gonna put together this whole meal for you and show you how to put together fajitas, and we're gonna do some nice little buttered steaks coming up. All so right, stay tuned. I love it, I love it. If you have a comment or suggestion about today's show, contact us at maddogandmerrill.com, and don't forget to friend us on Facebook. Hey, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Hey, hold on, right. I almost forgot this last jalapeno Ooh, popper. Man, I love those babies. Man, I'll those tell poppers, you. You, you put them on the, on the grates of the grill just long enough to blister their little bottoms and warm them up a little bit. They're delicious to do on the grill. I got my uh, peppers and onions. All right. We had them in that our little fajita mix here. I kind of don't have much room here, but. You oh. got them. Oh, man. Let me get these. Hold on now, folks. Hold on. Here, you want to use my. Uh... I don't think, I think those are a trick today. Oh, there you go. We've got these right here. Peppers and onions. Oh, man. Little night. Oh, I forgot my onion rings. Oh, look at Ooh. that. The flavor on those. Have you got it the olive oil on those? Oh, gosh. Olive oil and, mm. and lime juice and seasonings. Uh, there's our little hanger steak. Of course, we're out in the field, so we got flies. You hang on to that. All right. Oh, well, thank you. Look at Merrill's beautiful avocados. Mm. We put the grated cheese over and let those blend together, and you scoop those off. They're just delicious. Now we got to. We the, the the key thing about the hanger steak is to slice it thin. Oh, beautiful. Can I taste that just to make sure it's right? Though? Absolutely. Thank you. I'm sorry, folks, but you know me. You gotta. You know what? I'm, oh yep, man. I'm cutting it across the grate, so we're doing mm. good. Mm. And cut it like this, and mm. just absolutely delicious. That's the best cut of meat, and and, and you know why you never? Uh, uh, Rod was telling us. Rod, Ofty was telling us mm -hmm. the reason you never saw the hanger steak is they called it, they called it the the uh, the, the butcher steak because it never left the butcher. <laughs> yeah, boy, it's really good. Oh, it's just delicious, and it's great for fajitas. So that's a great way to do it. Merrill has our our little tortilla shells. Oh, you got one already. I'm ready. I'm hungry, oh, man. Oh, man. You dish those babies up, a couple little pieces of meat in there, some peppers right. in there, a little bit of onion in there, maybe a little extra squeezings of lemon or lime, some sour cream, and you roll that up. But I'll tell you what, you, you can have yours, Meryl. Okay. Oh, you're going for the avocado. I'm looking for the avocado. Look at this, baby. Okay, here's some gorgeous steaks right now, and I'm going to show okay. you the difference in, in the next segment. I left the cap on one of the loins. And so I left the cap on one of the loins so we have the fat there. The rest I trimmed, and that's what's nice about grass-fed beef is you can do either or. So here's a real quick little thing to do with steaks. Right. This is my favorite way to do it. We're going to mm. put a little bit of grandma hazels over the top of these. Okay. Just a tad bit of grandma hazels over these. This, I went, you can find them in, in those uh, neat little departments with the bulk spices. This is sweet bell pepper, red bell pepper. And I'm going to put that red bell oh. pepper over the top of the steaks. And Merrill, what's that over there, an eagle? Holy cow. And all we're going to do is palm those in a little right. bit. I'm going to do those on both sides. Okay. But we went to our good friends at El Cam Creamery. And, and let me show you some of the creameries okay. that they got real quick here. Just There's the El Cam Creamery. And we got just this one here. Mm -hmm. This is the unsalted one right here that Merrill was using for his. And then this is the cat's meow. And this is what I melted down. I melted down a whole one of these. This is the butcher block. Uh, paper that they use the old-fashioned butcher rolled butter okay and it's just absolutely phenomenal and El Cam Creamery has those I melted a whole a package of those Whoa. and what I did last night is I did a whole bunch of these steaks and I dip them in that that butter all right after I season both sides I stick them in a pan stack them up put them in the refrigerator and watch them solidify Oh, and honest look at that. to goodness, <laughs> dang! Uh, so there's our beautiful grass-fed beef. There's the solid butter on there. If you lift the hot grill of that right. green egg, place I'm that gonna, baby on there, man. I'm gonna throw those on the grill, and that butter is gonna sear. The butter is gonna stink. The butter is gonna smell to high heaven, mm. and just be absolutely delicious on that solidified butter. Now, the other way to do it would be a real nice hot skillet and pan fry each one, maybe uh, sear it up and move it over where there is no heat. But This is I, aroma right here, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love that smell. I'm going to get the rest of these on. You get okay. it cooking a nice little... Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little steak sauce Thank here. You. I, I do have a, uh, I use a quarter cup, one stick of butter, oh, whole can man. butter here. Let me get my friend's hand. As you can tell, I have melted that up. Now what I'm going <laughs> to do here is I've got some mushrooms. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these mushrooms cooked first, and I'll take a good couple of minutes. So right? use a quarter stick of the Alcan butter. Yep, yep. I'm going to put those on there. I'm going to stir those around. 
really get those down until they're really nice and soft. And sure. then I'm going to go ahead and add some of our barbecue sauce, which I'll show a little bit later. Okay. Is that the garlic? That is the garlic. Mm. Now, you can go ahead and use minced garlic, but since we already got garlic in our barbecue sauce, that's why I'm putting it in there. Sounds good. And a little bit of beef broth. I'm going to top that in there also with it. And then I'm going to let that go for about 10, 15 minutes. And you can add onions and things, but I like it just playing with the mushrooms. So I'm going to go start cooking the mushrooms here. You dropped my sun drop again. Oh, I did drop your sun drop. I'll have to go get another one. There you go. We'll I be right that. back. We'll finish this up, show you the steaks when we're done. We'll get, we'll eat up these fajitas, show you the steaks and the butter sauce when we're done. And we got a couple other tricks up our sleeves, so don't go away. We'll be. You show me that trick you how you pull that quarter. dropped my sun drop again. No, I didn't. Enough. View past episodes of our show by going to maddogandmerrill.com and click on Midwest Grillin'. It has been reported that Mad Dog and Merrill's signature sauces and spices have been seen around the world. And now we want to know where in the world is Mad Dog and Merrill? Take a selfie photo of yourself holding a Mad Dog and Merrill's product in front of a sign or interesting landmark. Post the photo to Mad Dog and Merrill's Facebook page and once a month, one lucky fan will win a grilling set of Mad Dog and Merrill's products. Go to Facebook.com slash Mad Dog and Merrill. Happy grilling! In 1946, Alcam Creamery was brought to life by Cameron Peckham in the beautiful hills of southwestern Wisconsin. Now, Merrill, today Alcam is owned by Cam's son, Gary. Actually, I knew that, but you know, yep. in the early days, cream was produced within a 50 mile radius of the plant and delivered in cans to the butter plant. Remember those old days? Oh, do I remember them? I'll tell you what. <laughs> I used to sit right in those cans of butter. <laughs> but today, Alcam procures cream from around the nation. I mean, the special flavors in their butter comes from the history of blending cream from various sources. You know, and, and over the years, their, their, pro, their mix of products has grown from uh, uh, the bulk boxes of salted butter right. to a wide assortment of different sizes and shapes made for retail, for, for food service, uh, ingredients, and the all cam specialty that old-fashioned rolled butter. And I'll tell you what, that is my favorite. The, 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 the really Amish good. rolled butter is just phenomenal. Yeah, great. Yeah. That L Cam rolled butter is delicious. Yes, sir. Meryl, I'm gonna have you give me a hand. All right. We have our steaks on the grill. I threw some green top onions on there. And I want to show you the most delicious steaks in the world, but they're not gonna be completed. Oops, sir. Whoop, dropped one. Okay, let's just get a couple more. He gets on so there. nervous, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you know, there's thousands and millions of people watching I us know. right now. A couple steaks over there. Holy cow. And uh what that? Look at the beautiful red peppers on there that I crushed into them. And those are just sweet bell peppers. So the oh. flavor and the texture is just phenomenal in there. And by the way, with the grass-fed beef that we're doing today and the Alcam Creamery, you can go on maddogandmerrill.com, maddogandmerrill.com. They're part of our sponsorships. You can go on there and click on them and you can get to their websites. It, they're delicious to do. You got it. How about a sauce? Hey, a little sauce. I got my mushrooms. They're all cooked up here, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. I'm just gonna add a little bit of beef broth. Can we do that over here? Or do you have to? Oh, have I want to heat that up a little bit there on there. A little beef broth there. Are we gonna ladle them over my steaks? Yes, we are, oh, sir. Good. Okay. So beef broth and garlic barbecue sauce. Garlic barbecue. You can use any barbecue sauce that you want. Yep. Stir that up. Let that sit for about 30 seconds. Is all what you can do, but it gets nice and creamy. Let hey, well, he's right stirring that there. up. Let me say a couple things. We have some wonderful steak sandwiches on the grill. I actually took a beautiful loin strip uh, of grass-fed beef, and, I, and while it was still frothy, I cut them into beautiful steak sandwiches. And we put them on the grill, and as Merrill's ladling the sauce over my steaks, I'll show you those steak sandwiches. But in the battle of sandwiches, the bun is like half, if not more, the battle. So we always choose S. Rosen's, and they are delicious. They make better burger buns, better steak buns. S. Rosen's, we chose the onion and the Kaiser ones today. So as Merrill takes and ladles those, that sauce over my steaks, I'm going to grab those steak sandwiches. All right. Ooh, 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 man. Talk Beautiful. to him while you're ladling. Oh, well, yeah, we have the skillet's hot is what it was. It turned out <laughs> like it wasn't hot. No, we've got that. They already got the mushrooms. We've got the barbecue sauce in there and the butter. And I'll tell you what, life is good. Sir. Oh, man, does that look, look delicious. At that. Look at that. I'll tell you what, now the steak sandwiches are wonderful. And you can have your butcher cut them for you or just cut them into nice strips. And they go fast and furious. And a lot of times we'll take a little Worcestershire. There and you go. Worcestershire and butter. So we'll sear these up, put them in a pan. 
sear them up real fast, put them in a pan, splash a little Worcestershire, Worcestershire over the top of about a, a, a portion of Alcam butter and let those sit in there oh, and then man. serve them I up. I love it. That and the W sauce. That's probably one of my favorite mixtures, really. Butter and Worcestershire. Yep, it is. It's, it's, uh, it's a match made in heaven. And a, little bit of gar and a little bit of garlic barbecue That's sauce. That's one of my other favorites, too. That, <laughs> butter, and garlic. You know what else I like? A little bit of green pepper in there, red pepper in there. I like that, too. It makes a big difference. Let's just see. Now, how's the sauce? Oh, Isn't man, that that's good? delicious. Absolutely delicious. That oh. Cam butter is delicious. I can't oh. wait to dive into these steaks. Oh, man. We're going to be right back to wrap this whole fiasco up. Sure Don't forget to go good. on maddogandmarrow.com. I'm going to cut into some of these steaks mm. to ensure the gorgeous medium rare. And that we'll sauce, be right back. I know your steaks are good, but that, that sauce is awesome. That sauce, that sauce is delicious. Mm. That really helps. Mm. If you have a comment or suggestion about today's show, contact us at maddogandmerrill.com. And don't forget to friend us on Facebook. The Oneida Nation. All right, welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grill. And you ready, Merrill? I'm ready. Go. One, two, three. <laughs> you know the dishes, man. You, know, you think you folks think this is all fun and games? Yeah. But someone's got to do the dishes, That's and right. it's scissors because yep. scissors don't cut. Well, they rock. don't. Don't rock smash. Well, the once again, we had a great time. We're in Vernon oh. County here in the beautiful western part of Wisconsin. The beautiful valleys over here. It's gorgeous country. We invite everybody to visit. A uh, beautiful trout stream oh, behind right us. Here. We haven't even showed you. Our cameraman Gary is just all excited about that. Oh, Go online at maddogandmerrill.com. Learn a little bit more. As always, we have a great time. Time to say goodbye, Merrill. Goodbye, Merrill. Goodbye, Merrill. No. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great one. Happy grilling. Happy grilling. Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grillin' is a production of Lashbro Visual Communications.